from the Anastasis uh, series, Anastasis series, Resurrection series of uh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Last uh, part. Everybody, this is Angelo Quinones, and you reached IM Ministries. IM Ministries is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holy and as far as the Bible. The Bible has been blessed by the way, post by and Shalom Alechem. And then you reverse the process, okay? You say to the person, Alechem Shalom, like that. And there's different uh, greetings in Hebrew according to its gender, okay? That's just the deal. That's the tricky part. And saluting somebody somebody in Hebrew, you understand? It has to be the proper gender. Shalom is just much easier because Shalom you can say it to everybody. You know, but there are different greetings in uh, Hebrew and in Greek. Yasus, Yasa. Yeah, so that's just the deal. That's Greek uh, by the way. Well, this is the last part. Now I don't know how many parts this last part is gonna have, okay? <laughs> but uh, this has to do with um, the Anastasis series, which which is uh, resurrection in Greek. Anastasis. I used to say Anastasis. It's much more easier, but to be true with the acute marker, to the acute marker, and all that other stuff, the stuff of God, um, you know, you have to say Anastasis, you know, and not not cheat. Okay? <laughs> Anastasis is cheating. Um, this part has to do with uh, no annihilation. That's the title. It's probably part three or four, and. You know, how can you speak on no annihilation if you don't speak on Ezekiel, uh, chapter 18, verses really 1 through 4, okay? So this is going to prove that there's no such thing as annihilation recorded in verse 4 of chapter 18 of Ezekiel. Ezekiel wasn't speaking about annihilation, the annihilation of the soul, okay? That's just it. That's just the deal. Let's pray to the living God of Israel that we'll be blessed in this study. So holy and merciful and gracious and mighty God, we just come to you um, and praise your holy name because it is great and you are great. And we just confess our sins to you, Father, of not being patient sometimes with people who are just, just don't listen uh, to us. Um, I'm talking about family members. and uh, But we have the patience of the Holy Spirit and we have to use uh, his fruit in, in this regard, so I, I confess that sin to you, Lord. I confess all my sins to you, Father. I bring them up to you so they can be washed away from me so I could do this Bible study with clean, with a clean heart and clean hands. And I want to bless your people. I want to uh, study this, 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 uh, this truth that's found and recorded here. Um, and... Um, and so that's just it, Father. We just need your boldness, power, clarity, assuredness, and, and recollection of things. And uh, and I just pray that you multiply the study in some way. All the studies that's, that's in my channels, that are in my channels, I pray that you do, that you will bless. Before I'm taken uh, away from this earth, uh, after I'm taken away from this earth uh, to appear uh, uh, at your uh, bima. And... Um, I just pray that the, the, the ones who don't believe in the resurrection and the bodily resurrection of Jesus may believe it. I thank you for all things, both spiritual and physical, even for, for suffering and persecution. And um, I just pray for the peace of Israel during this time of war. And I pray for the peace and the protection of the Kirk. And um, I, just, I just hope and pray that we will continue to be used mightily in your kirk in your church and um i pray all these things in the name of jesus amen well guys this is the cool the god this is the key now um uh, this is this is a prefix uh to a last sermon okay and so that's just it and so basically the prefixes and the appendices have to do with no annihilation and I had to touch on a subject before I leave the series. Uh, this is the series uh, entitled Somatika Anastasis Tu Yesu Christu Kuriu Hemon, The Bodily Resurrection of Jesus Christ Our Lord. Okay, I mean, that's the, that's, the, that's the second title. Anastasis, which means resurrection, is the first main vein plain title. Okay, that's the, that's the main. That's, that's, that's what you see as a thumbnail there when you see the video up on YouTube. Okay, and then you have the longer uh, title, which is the second title. Basically, uh, you do that in books. You give like 
the main title and then you have a subtitle, whatever the case may be. So uh, I've been tr uh, trying to prove and been proving it very well, uh, graciously, that there is no annihilation of the soul of Jesus. Uh, and there's no annihilation. There was an annihilation of the so of his soul. There was an annihilation of his body. Okay, this idea that it evaporated into gases is annihilation. That's what by the Jehovah's so-called witnesses. You understand what I'm saying? So we can't have that. We can't have that false teaching hanging around. You know what I mean? That's just the deal. That's just it. Now, um, Ezekiel. I'm not going to read all of this, okay? But I'm going to read, uh, basically, uh, verse 4, okay? And um, and then I'm going to go to verses uh, 1 and 2 in particular, too. Because Jehovah's Witnesses don't do that. They don't, they don't, they don't uh, drench the verse that they're talking about with the surrounding context. Okay, they don't drench it. You understand what I'm saying? It's just like, uh, for example, the sacrifice. The sacrifice was drenched with water. Okay, the, 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 the altar, everything around it, the, the trench was drenched with water. So, so just to make sure there's no sh chicanery going on or chicanery going around. You know what I'm saying? Going around and all that stuff. So he wanted drenched, the prophet, okay, Elijah. He wanted everything drenched. He wanted everything really drowned, okay, in water. So that's not gonna be, there won't be no dispute. Oh, there was some chicanery or chicanery or whatever the case may be, some tricks, some hocus pocus. No, 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 no. Drench it and God will still burn it up. You understand what I'm saying? So the reverse is true with this. I want I want this drenched verse four with the surrounding context. So so the integrity of verse four can be can be can be uh could uh uh withstand the pressure. The pressure, you understand what I'm saying? Because I forget my English here in the Philippines. Now, let's read thus far. Let's read what the Jehovah's Witnesses would read. Okay? And behold, it says over here, All souls in the plural of mine, says God. God is speaking. The soul of the Father, okay, in the singular, as well as uh, the soul of the Son, S-O-N, by the way, is mine, says God. The soul, in the singular, who uh, sins, the soul that sins will die. The soul that sins will, will die. Meaning we'll drop dead. That's just all there's to it. The person is talking about, in quote, by the way, the person. Okay. There's a mentioning of blood here in the chapter, which is very great for the Trinitarian. It's taste. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, because of the mentioning of blood, okay, twice here in this book, I mean, uh, in, in the chapter, we can tell the witnesses or anybody else that believes in the, in the annihilation of the soul that it's not talking about uh, a spiritual death. It's talking about physical death okay physical death now one is talking about physical death and then the, the mentioning of blood just before it a few verses before what i'm going to give you talks about physical death but you know somebody uh taking out somebody you know somebody killing somebody is that what i'm saying uh for example in, Pro in proverbs chapter one their, uh, their feet are swift to shed blood okay that's recorded in romans uh uh uh, 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 uh chapter uh, i believe chapter three you know what i'm saying People use their pots for iniquity, you understand? So it's to shed blood. Very quick to do that. Very easy to shed blood. So that has to do with physical blood. That has nothing to do with the soul. The soul doesn't have any blood, okay? Uh, the soul can't die like that, okay? Because uh, it's not made of blood. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you those passages of Scripture in a second. Now, <clears throat> we have to stay with the context. This is I'm not talking about resurrection one and resurrection two. Okay, I'm not talking about that the souls of the Christians and the souls of the un, uh, of the non-Christians uh, are going to survive uh, death and will uh, experience uh, a, a joy with God, the believers, and then will experience uh, a hellfire and torture forevermore, something that doesn't uh, that is not put out by the unbelievers in the eschaton. Okay. Unquenchable fire. Asbestos is the Greek there, recorded in Matthew chapter 3. It's very clear that uh, the torture goes on and on and on and on forever. It does it's not turned off or whatever the case may be. You understand what I'm saying? That's just the deal. Luke chapter 16 is an example of that. It's not a parable. It's an example of everlasting fire. Okay, remember. Okay, uh, said uh, Abraham to, to uh, the rich man uh, there called Technon. So he was a child. 
He was a child of Abraham in some kind of a sense. Either it was an Arab, somebody like Ishmael, or somebody like that, you understand what I'm saying? Or, uh, you know, uh, someone who was a uh, Jew. You understand what I'm saying? The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, whatever the case may be. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? So that's just a deal. Uh, but we're, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about resurrection one or, 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 or two. And two. Okay, I'm talking about the bodily resurrection of Jesus. That when he poured out his soul unto death, it doesn't mean that his soul was destroyed. We already went through the, the Hebrew word ara very clearly, not to be confused with ara, that means to see. That's found and recorded in uh, Exodus ch uh, chapter 24, verses uh, 9 and 10, or actually, I think, verse 10. And it says that 20, you know, uh, 74 people saw God at the same time. And so Moses and Adam and Adap and Abayu and 20 and then as 70 uh, elders of, the, of Israel, they saw the God of Israel. That's Ra. Ra. Not, not, not that. It's Ara that I'm talking about. Be beginning with, a, with a either Aleph or Ayan, you know, some, some, some kind of silent letter. Um, that's recorded not only there in, in Isaiah 53 verse 12, very, very long uh, verse, I mean, one of the longest verses I've ever seen in the scriptures. But it's also recorded for Rebecca pouring out um, the water from the uh, from the pitcher uh, into the trough for the camels to drink. Verse 20, chapter 24 of uh, Genesis, of uh, Bereshit, uh, Genesis in Hebrew, Bereshit, you understand what I'm saying? Genesis in Greek. And so, um, it wasn't destroyed, meaning the water wasn't destroyed when it was after it was poured out. The witnesses have to understand that. They have to understand Okay, then you have to go by the Bible. You can't go by the pamphlets and magazines of the tower you know, or traditions. This is not filler on the roof. This is the Bible. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? That's just a deal. Muzzle top, by the way. You understand? Now, that's just a deal. No, no. If you ask the witnesses why in the world, okay, was verse 4 written, they wouldn't know. Ask the witnesses this poignant question clear, stark question you understand okay ask it like, ask it like this of uh, the question quote why was verse 4 of Ezekiel chapter 18 written and recorded end quote okay I'll give you five seconds by the way I'm so nice and cheerful you understand what I'm saying I mean come on man I mean, this, is, this is like beat the clock all over again you understand what I'm saying Give me five seconds. You should know about now. You should interrupt the five seconds as Ange. It's this, 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 and that. You understand what I'm saying? Eh? This is a uh, hutas and a canos. I mean, come on, let's just sit down. It, it, Angelo, it, it's easy. I, as a witness, <laughs> they're not going to say this. I, as a witness, read, okay, what's recorded in verses one and two, and I, I gave you the answer right off the bat. But they're not going to say that because they don't know. See, they're not taught to look at the surrounding context. They're not. And not, and not. Am I, am I being understood? They don't go by the context. They don't. They go by one verse of scripture pulled out, you know, like, like, uh, like, uh, like uh, tooth decay, you know, pull out of context. You understand what I'm saying? You understand that? They, they, they don't go by the context. They go by one scripture that they were taught to, to, to vomit to you guys. Uh, can reg regurgitate. Okay, fine. I'll clean it up. Uh, and so the thing is that they, they, that's, all, that, that's all they taught. They're not taught to read around the context and read the and read the, the scripture according to the diamond of its setting. Okay, you don't just read the you don't just look at the diamond. You look at the ring. You look at everything. You understand what I'm saying? Ah, uh, that's just a deal. Well, that's just a deal all across the board. Now, why was it recorded? Well, it tells you in verse one and two. Okay, then the word Logos there in, in the Greek Actually Logos Then the word of the Lord Kurio in, in the Greek Septuagint Okay, came to me Eme, I think is in the emphatic there In, in this Greek Septuagint They're saying Okay, and I think that's Legon And that's a, 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 a present a participle Active uh, The old and the Omega and the new in the Greek Septuagint Is proving that point We're going to see that We're going to see that So I'm not going to really talk about it too much Okay, it's Claudius, the Greek there. And the Hebrew also. Now, verse 2. Now, the reason why I gave it verse 1, because it's Jehovah's Speakers, so you have to listen. You can't witch wine and complain about it. 
This is the same thing recorded basically in verse 1 of chapter 1 uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Zechariah. So when I say that Jehovah sent Jehovah in chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, and some, uh, you know, some Hebrew Bibles, you know, verses 12 and 13, you can't which one and complain about it because it's Jehovah speaking. It says it's Jeho that Jehovah uh, 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 spoke to uh, the prophet, you know, so he's a prophet. And not only that, Jehovah spoke to him in verse 1 of, of that chapter. Okay, Zechariah. So Jehovah sent Jehovah, so you have to listen to it. I know you don't like it, but you have to listen. Shut up and listen to it. That's all. That's just sad. Now I'm I'm taking care of my baby, so she could probably cry. She'll she'll cry at any. She can cry at any moment, you know. All right. Now, uh, so let's uh, look at verse two. And verse two tells you why verse four and you know and three and everything else was recorded. You understand what I'm saying? It says over here, "What do you?" Now I gotta check this out because is he speaking to Ezekiel that was saying all these things? Or is Ezekiel supposed to give this message to the children of Israel? Is it in the plural? Is it in the singular or is it in the plural? I gotta check that out. Okay, I can check that out. Uh, you know, if it's uh, 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 um, uh, you know, if it's uh, if it's uh, humes or if it's uh, su, I got I gotta check it out. You know, in the Greek. You know what I'm saying? And then in the Hebrew, if it's in the plural. But well, you know, we'll we'll, we'll do that together, Lord willing. So, what do you mean? That says God. God is speaking. What do you mean by uh, using this proverb? Okay, concerning uh, the land of Israel. Don't say Israel. That's cheap. Say Israel, like what a Y sound. You understand what I'm saying? Saying, okay, the fathers. And this is what was going on. This was the gossip going on. This was the this was the proverb going on. You know, the fathers in the plural. The fathers eat the sour grapes, but the children's teeth are set on edge. Okay. And this is a, this is a question. Okay. Ah. Now let's continue to read this 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 this, this chapter. As I live, declares who the Lord God, you are surely not going to use this proverb okay in Israel anymore that's what it says you will not use this proverb anymore I don't like it I hate it says God and you, and strike it from your lips strike it are you telling the children of Israel okay are you telling them that the fathers could do whatever the hell that they want to do and then the children are going to reap the consequences for their sins and crimes of the fathers? God says, I hate that. I hate it right now. Stop it. The fathers eat uh, the sour grapes and nothing affects them. <laughs> the teeth are like the same. But the children who had nothing to do with their crimes and sins and fornications and iniquities, they're going to bear the load. Oh, God says, no. As a matter of fact, that's in the Bible. That's the, let me just add a little bit to this because we know what the rest of the Bible says, you know, about the third and fourth generation. That's the exception and not the rule. You understand what I'm saying? I understand that, you know, uh, things that fathers do affects children, uh, the, the children of the family and, and generations of the family. Just look at the Kennedys. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, as the father of the Kennedys was, I mean, he was just downright dirty. He was a dirty man. Doing a lot of low-down businesses and stuff like that and cheating and scheming and, and robbing and, and all this stuff in business. You understand what I'm saying? There was no family curse more, okay? In the 40s, uh, 40s, 50s, 60s, you understand? And, and, and at 90s, because of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, John F. Kennedy Jr. dying in an airplane crash in, what, 95 or 97 or whatever the case may be, in the 90s. No family was cursed more than the Kennedys. Now, that's just that's a fact. Because of the sin of the father. But I don't want to go through all the, 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 the deaths. I mean... You know, the brother of John F. Kennedy and Robert Kennedy, I mean, uh, died in World War II. The, the, the plane exploded. And then all, you know, the, the children that, 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 you know, that are, you know, a lot of them that were conceived, I mean, you know, 
you know, miscarriages and stuff like that, or whatever the case may be. Not only that, in 1963, uh, John F. Kennedy was assassinated on November the 22nd in Dallas, Texas. Not only that, Bobby Kennedy's brother was assassinated in 1968. Ironically, okay, after he said, not not then and there, but he, he did say it, in, I think in 1968, that a uh, a, a black president, a president, uh, a black man will be president in exactly 40 years. Man, was that prophetic. He hit the nail right on the head. But he was assassinated in 1968, around April, okay, of that, of that, of that, uh, either April or June of that year, whatever the case may be. And that's what I'm saying. And if that wasn't enough, then Ted Kennedy went through the fiasco, you understand, of the car of a car that he of the car that he was driving going into the going into the drink uh, with uh, with a girl partner she died he left the car i mean he only got 11 seconds to, to get out to get out of there i'm not i'm not trying to support what he did but i'm just saying man you got you got 11 or 12 seconds to hightail it out of the car or you're gonna drown so you got to make a decision. I mean, you're going to save the life of the person that's in there or are you just going to get out yourself? I mean, you don't have a lot of time to spare. You know what I'm saying? But nevertheless, his father couldn't take it and died of a heart attack. Meaning the father that did all these crimes and stuff like that and set everything on fire. You know what I'm saying? And Ted Kennedy, I mean, he, he eventually would die. I mean, you know, I don't think that was part of the curse, but I mean, he died of a brain tumor in 2009, was it? I think uh, something like that, 2009, whatever the case may be. And then before that, okay, around 1995 or 1997, like I said before, in the 1990s, John F. Kennedy Jr. died, okay, in 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 uh, in, a, in a plane. Now that was his fault. There's no, nobody told him to go up, okay, with no experience in the dark like that, okay. He he wasn't a, an experienced pilot to be piloting a plane with two uh, with two passengers, okay, all right, in the middle of the night. So everything was dark, and I mean, they couldn't see, and, and down they went. Okay? So that's just the deal. All right. So that's, but that's the exception of the rule. Okay? A curse and stuff like that until the third and fourth generation, that's the exception, not the rule, man. You understand? That's just the deal. Ah? Huh? Well, this proverb it shall not be said in Israel anymore. I hate it. I don't like it. It's disgusting, by the way. And I'm not going to have it. So I'm going to teach you. In this chapter, says God, you understand what I'm saying? That everybody is going to bear their own load. Everybody's going to bear their own responsibility. If the father sins, okay, he's going to bear his crimes. If the son sins, he's going to bear his own load upon his head, or whatever the case may be. You understand? Huh? That's just it. And that's just it all across the board. Before we look at verse 4, let me take care of this right, right away. Okay, because I know... Um, get anxious to see it if not if not maybe you were reading uh you read it already and then and then uh, because i told you about it and you beat me to it now let's read verses 10 and 13 because it mentions blood this is the proof right here in the text there's so much proof here anywhere just read verse 20 i mean it's a lot of proof all over the place the last uh, part of the chapter is a proof that doesn't mean this doesn't mean annihilation of the soul it's, it's, I mean, it's just a deal it says over here in verse 10 it says then he uh, may uh, then he may have a, a violent son, meaning the father. He may have a violent son who uh, sheds blood, okay, and uh, who uh, does any of these things to a brother. Now, why? Uh, what was the reason of that? Well, I mean, it mentions blood. It mentions blood. It mentions somebody uh, killing somebody else, just like Cain killed Abel. You understand what I'm saying? And uh, the blood uh, cried. In the ground, of like that, you know what I mean. Well, let's just get to this. Verse thirteen mentions blood again. He lends money. He lends money on uh, interest, and okay, he takes takes uh, increase. Something that God doesn't like, by the way. Will he live? Okay, he will not live. He will not live. He has uh, committed all these abominations he will surely be put to death his blood you see his blood his blood will be on his own rosh or head rosh in hebrew 
Okay, if I lay it properly in the grief situation, we'll check that out. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so it mentions blood. Just like blood was mentioned and recorded, you understand? With Dom in Hebrew, no, no doubt for blood, probably. We'll, we'll check it out. And Haimata in, in Greek. Okay, Greek Septuagint. It's there. This, 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 this stuff, the stuff of God is in the Greek Septuagint. In the Greek Septuagint. Now, that's, um, it goes without saying that sometimes uh, these, some great verses, uh, like in Job or whatever the case may be, is not, it's not there recorded in the Greek Septuagint. Okay, alas. But this is there. This is there. This is that. Recorded. it. Okay. So the mentioning of blood is recorded in verse 10. It's literal blood. Because somebody was, you know, if somebody kills somebody and, and, and says it's blood. Now, in verse in verse 13, it mentions blood. The, his blood will be upon his own head. That means it's death by blood. Okay? Death by blood. Not that the soul is going to die. But that, okay, his body is going to be put to death. Okay? And we see it was written and recorded in James chapter 2, verse 26, that uh, the body without the soul is dead. It's not, the, it's not the other way around. It's not the soul without the body is dead. No. It's the body without the soul is dead. Meaning, you know, the soul comes out of the body, and then that body becomes clinically and physically dead. Okay, not spiritually, but physically and, and, and clinically dead. It's a corpse. It's dead. There's no life in it. So it's dead. It qualifies as a dead corpse. Okay? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's that true. Okay, that's what James said. You have to listen to James. Well, you're not going to listen to nobody? You don't listen to God? You don't listen to Ezekiel? You don't listen to James? How can you call yourself a Christian, a Christian person, one of God's people, if you don't listen to the Bible? You have no right to call yourself a, a Christian person if you don't listen to the Bible. Okay? I'll just say no, 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 no proof at all. You have to show the marks of discipleship. And we, that's the Greek P. And one of the marks of discipleship is obedience. Romans chapter 16. You understand what I'm saying? Around verse 25. Obedience. That's what's the deal. Now let's look at the coup de grace. Let's look at the main verse of scripture that recorded here that the witness is you. So we looked at the surrounding context. We looked at, uh, you know, verse one, two, and I think we read even three, right? I think, did we read three? Something like that. And um, and so we saw, you know, uh, other verses of scripture indicating that this, is, this talks about physical death and that the father has to be responsible for his own sin and that the son, if he sins, uh, well, he'll be responsible for his uh, fornications and crimes. As a matter of fact, in fact, it calls uh, abomination the things that uh, the son, okay, uh, is doing and, and the father, if he's involved in the crimes. You understand what I'm saying? But let's go to the verse of, uh, you know, the coup de grace. Now, the coup de grace. It's written and recorded in verse four. This is this is the, this is the main point of argument. So we have to know this left and right, up and down. I mean, we have to know the full Greek construction, the, the whole Hebrew uh, construction, uh, how it's spelled, how it's spat out by God. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just the deal. So we can use it. We can use it uh, for the witnesses and teach them. Okay, how it's really done. We have to know the constructions. That's just the deal. Now, it says over here, okay, behold, this is an imperative in Greek, probably Edu, okay, behold, okay, all souls, that's in the plural, all souls are mine, and all souls are mine, uh, the soul of the father, in the, in the singular, the, of the son, uh, uh, um, Patras, I think that's Patras, as well as the soul of the son, Huil. In Greek, okay, and uh, Genesis for possession, Genesis for description, something like that. Uh, the soul, soul of the son is mine. The soul, okay, who sins will die. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. First of all, it doesn't say that the that that um, it will die spiritually. Okay, the soul. Okay, you have to understand that the Bible speaks like that sometimes there were eight souls in the act, but I mean, it, was, it wasn't like there were just like, you know, souls hanging around without, a, without bodies. There were eight persons, eight souls. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Well, that's the person blessing the Lord. It's not talking about that he's just, uh, you know, the spirit hanging around. Okay, the joint, uh, praising God. You understand what I'm saying? The soul, the person. 
you see? And so, and so that's just a deal. <clears throat> now remember, I gave you verse 13, it spoke about blood. Okay, his blood will be upon his own head. Those are physical things, blood, head, you understand what I mean? Head, blood, and that's just a deal. These are physical things. These are physical items, <laughs> head and blood, blood and head, you understand what I'm saying? Am I making myself clear? No, it says over here, let's let this, let's just break it, let's just break, break it, this apart. <laughs> As I speak, it's a little Irish. You know, this is like Scotty from Star Trek. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it says over here, behold, okay, all souls, all souls are mine, all souls, the souls of the fathers and the souls of whoever. They're mine. Why are they are they his? Well, he created. Okay, he put the. Uh, was he put the? He created man, but but he put the soul in man. Okay, so he created the flesh of man and put the soul in it. You know, so cool they You understand what I mean? It's a finishing a finishing church. And then he mimics what he did, in, you know, uh, uh, in, in uh, what we call Genesis chapter 2. You understand what I'm saying? And um, in verse 22 of chapter 20 of uh, John's gospel, the gospel of Katayawan, and, you know, received the Holy Spirit, and he breathed into them, okay? And then they became alive, meaning the disciples. He mimicked the same thing. You understand what I'm saying? That's just a deal. So it says over here, behold, all oh, souls are mine. They belong to me. The soul of uh, the father as one of the soul of the son. Okay, it's mine. So ownership basically is peppered throughout the, the 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 first part of this verse. It's peppered with it. Ownership. The God owns the soul. It, uh, there he is. You understand what I'm saying? That's just a deal. There he is. Okay, this is part two of Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4. All right, so let's let's look at the Greek Septuagint, okay? Uh, they go to, they go to, let's go to Ezekiel chapter, chapter 18 and verse 4, according to this Greek Septuagint. Now, there are different Greek Septuagint versions of them. So, uh, so last a lot, Brenton was one of the ones that I had in uh, New York, and I have this one here. So, I mean, you know. And it's right there. It's right, right there in Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiel. Okay, no, but there's no. There's all that the cute marker. I think the cute markers and and uh, over the eight are there. So you know, e Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Something like that. Yeah. What I'm saying. Let's spoke to bear. Now let's go to um. Let's go to uh, chapter 18. It's right there. Okay, so over here we have in Ezekiel, 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 uh, in the Greek Septuagint, chapter 18 and verse 1. Let's just read verse 1. Now remember, this comes from God, so we have to listen to it. Okay, we can't which one and complain. Ah, you know, Ezekiel, you know, I, I believe that the soul doesn't go on. Yes, says who? The soul does go on. You understand what I'm saying? It's not annihilated. No annihilation. And you have to listen because over here. It says in Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Kai egene, kai egene logos, or lagas, kuriu, pras eme, pras eme legon. What is that? What's, what's, what's that? Well, let's, 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 let's check it out. Kai means and, also even, both, like that, you know, capillative connective, uh, conjunction, and so that's just the deal. Uh, nowadays pronounced ke in modern in modern Greek, but this is Kai, this is Biblical Greek, Kai. Egene, Egene. Okay, came, Egene. Came, yeah, I like that. Uh, the word, there's no ha here, so it's a uh, word, but you know, this is, the, this is the word of God, okay, coming from God himself, so you could say the. Uh, lagos or Logos, for that lambda, Omicron, Gamma, Omicron, Final Sigma, you understand what I'm saying? Kuriu, of the Lord. Kurias, Kuriu, Kurio, Kurian, you know the paradigm, you know, of uh, the Lord. Uh, two, and Pras, okay, just like uh, Prasopan, Pras, Prasopan, you know, face to face like that. Pras, uh, two, Eme, and that's in the emphatic, me. 
You have to put some punch and Kool-Aid and, and, and emphasis when you're teaching it, though, okay? When, when you're teaching Greek, okay, fine. You can get away with it without the emphasis. But when you're really faced with with uh, God saying something emphatic, oh, this is an emphatic right here. Amen. You know what I'm saying? That's just the deal. Legon. Okay? Not, not simply a lego. But legon, this is a participle. This is a present participle in the active form. Omega and new is the is the is the is the participle of morphine. A participle is like an ing word in English. You know, uh, kicking, sitting, eating, drinking, playing, laughing, crying. I mean, all these are participles in English, and then they use ing in English. In Greek, they they use other forms to to, to showcase the participial con, uh, construction and omega nu is one of the what one of the seven forms so i know that's basically like basically three but and then and, and everything kind of comes from that but you still have to learn these forms okay omega nu is a present a participle active construction like in labon um zone uh huparchon uh and all of that good stuff now, legon means saying, okay? Legon. So you got leg here, the stem, and you got omega nu as the participial morphine. Okay, fine. Let's jump all the way, okay, all right, to verse 4. Because this is a clue that God, this is what the Jehovah's Witnesses, okay, misuse. They say that the soul of man, the spirit of man, does not go on living after death. It's annihilated. It's destroyed. Uh, so that's just a deal. But the, but the, but but um, but the Bible is not. But the Bible is not teaching that here. This is not meant to teach that at all whatsoever. This is meant to teach that everybody is responsible for their own sins and crimes. The sins of the fathers, they're responsible for their sins. The sins of the sons, and the sons are responsible for their sins and crimes. You understand what I'm saying? And I already said about the exception and not the rule. Okay, there are curses. Like if a father or mother sins, that sin can pass to the children, and then the children can get punished for it. Absolutely. But that's the exception, not the rule. The rule is, the standard is, that if a father sins, he will bear his own load or, or burden his own responsibility for that sin and abomination. You understand what I'm saying? And the mother is the same. Okay, if she sins, that's a motorcycle in the background. If she sins, she will bear her own, she will be responsible for her own sins and crimes. Okay, you understand? Okay, good. So it's not talking about annihilation. It's not talking about the soul being destroyed. We're not talking about that. The soul that sins, okay, not another person, but it will die. He will die. It's a, it's a, it's a good translation. Okay? The soul that sins, the person that sins, he will die, not somebody else. In his place, you understand what I'm saying? So this idea that the children of Israel was hearing uh, this, this this basic recording all the time, you know, that this proverb that um, the father eat the fathers eat the sour grapes, but the children's teeth are set at edge. God says, no, I don't want to hear that anymore in Israel. I don't want to hear that. You shall not say that. Okay, that in other words, that the fathers could do whatever they want. And the children are going to suffer for it. No, that's not like that. The fathers, if they sin, they're going to hold their own. They, they're, they're going to share. They're going to burden their responsibility. Okay, is that clear? That's what it's teaching right here. It's not talking about annihilation or whatever, the soul being destroyed or whatever the case may be. Uh, let's read it in, uh, in the Greek here. It's quite clear. And then we're going to go to the Hebrew. Praise God. Verse 4. Edu, behold, look. It says over here, look. Okay, oh, uh, that's a pasai. Oh, okay, the, and that's a uh, 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 high. Okay, you know, hoi, high, uh, ta, what an, what an alpha. That's, that's from the plural part of the paradigm. Okay, uh, you know, that's in the plural, high. All oh, the souls, okay, psukai. Okay, psuke is the lexical form. Souls is over here in the, uh, in the plural, a uh, psukai. Uh, spelled out psi, upsilon, now it's called ypsilon, chi, alpha, iota. Uh, psukai. All the souls. Okay, R is ani. Okay, ani, epsilon, iota, nu, now it's called ni, alpha, iota, you understand what I'm saying? R, emu, mine. Okay? 
the soul. And it goes to the singular, the soul. Uh, hey, nowadays called e. Psuke, or psuche, the soul. Okay, of uh, the father, the soul of the father, two patras, and that's in the genitive case construction, either the genitive, the genitive of description or the genitive of possession or whatever the case may be. Uh, two patras, the soul of the father as well. Okay, huto is an adverb. Okay, it's come from, it comes from hutas. It made an adverb, uh, said Manti, out of it by uh, adding an omega after the tau. Huto, okay. Uh... Uh, and the soul, or also, we could say also the soul, or whatever the case may be, kai he psuche, or psuche, and also the soul of the sun. Okay, to who you? Who you is son of the sun? A mine, a mu, mine. R, N, I. The soul, there's no uh, hey here, but you can say the soul. The soul, okay, psuche, the soul, okay, uh, and you can say over here, um, let me see, that since hamar, uh, hamar, te sasa, that since, okay, it, I'll tell you, you can't say she. It doesn't, doesn't really doesn't match it, you know. It just because it's feminine doesn't mean it means her. Uh, it, uh, alte, uh, will, tele, and that's in the third person, okay? Uh, from the Thalo paradigm, uh, it means will. And this is, I think this is a liquid future, uh, will. Okay, will. It might be a liquid future, tele, there. Uh, from the Thalo paradigm, you know, Thalo, tele, tele, like that, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, it will. Okay, die is apathane. Apathane. Alpha P, Omicron now they call Omicron. Theta now they call Theta. Alpha Nu now they call Ni. Epsilon Iota. You understand what I'm saying? <coughs> it will die. That's all. Not another. It doesn't say the soul that sins will get away with it and another one will die in its place. No, it doesn't say that though. Everybody is responsible for their own sins. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody. Everybody's responsible for their own fornications and sins and crimes and transgressions and iniquity. Everybody is going to bear his, his or her own responsibility for uh, the sin that that person commits. You understand what I'm saying? So just because the father sins, it doesn't mean that the children are going to suffer because of the sins of the father. That's not the main vain teaching of the Bible. Yes, there are exceptions, and I already mentioned the Kennedys. The Kennedys was a cursed family because of the sins of the father. Many, many people died in that family because of the sins of the father. I already mentioned uh, the people that died. Robert Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, John F. Kennedy Jr., the brother of John F. Kennedy. You understand what I'm saying? And perhaps maybe that woman that was in the car with uh, Ted Kennedy that died, and almost Ted Kennedy was drowned in the car. You understand what I'm saying? All because of the business dealings and shenanigans of the father. But that's the exception and not the rule. The rule is that if a person dies, he or she will be responsible for their own sin and not somebody else. That is the main teaching of the Bible. And that's what God wants everybody to teach according to, to verses 1 and 2. In particular, 2. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just the deal. Now, I want to read... Okay, from chapter um, 18 and verse um, and verse 20. Let's read that. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20. And the scriptures cannot be broken. It says something like this. It says the person, you see, the person. Now, probably uh, Nefesh is there in the background, but it's, this is a good translation. The person, not only the soul, but the person who sins will die. The person who sins will die. The son will not bear. Look at that. The son will not bear the punishment uh, for the fathers. Is that clear? For the father's iniquity. No, will the father bear the punishment for the son's iniquity? Okay. Is that clear? 
Let me keep on reading. It says uh, the sons of iniquity. It says uh, the righteous, uh, the righteousness of the uh, the righteousness of the righteous will be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked will be upon himself. Okay, that's what to do. That's what I'm saying. And that's just a deal all across the board. I mean, I mean, uh, that's just it. That if there was a proverb, like I said, going on. And God says, no, that proverb shall not be taught in Yisrael anymore. That the father can do basically like this. I'm going to say this is a very strong way of saying it. Okay. The fathers, it was going on that the fathers could do whatever the hell they want to do. And the Bible says no. Okay. And if they do, they have to bear their own responsibility. They, they have to be responsible for their own sins and crimes. In other words, that the father, okay, it, it, you know, if the father sins, it doesn't mean that the children are going to be affected by the father's sin. If the father sins, he has to bear his own load. If the son sins, okay, the father is not going to is not going to bear the responsibility of 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 the son. Okay. It's the other way around. The father's not responsible for the sins of the uh, of the son, and the sons are not responsible for the sins of the father. In a sense, okay. If they didn't cause them, uh, if they didn't cause them, if they did not cause them to do it, okay, that's just the deal, okay. Now let, let's look at the Hebrew. And we're gonna Hebrew. Uh, it's quite clear. The Hebrew is gonna be nefesh for soul and and, and, and things like that. So let's look at this uh, interlinear app over here. Okay, all right. And I hope I have it right there. I don't know if I have it right there, but yeah, this is Ezekiel. You understand? And it says over here, all. Oh, it says, behold, all. Oh, behold is uh, 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 okay, hain. Be behold, hain is Edo in Greek. All oh, is kal. Okay, that's a call for the hardening doggish there in the comments. It's an A class, like in the word father, ka, and then you have the L, kal, yeah, all. Pas in, 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 in Greek, in the same All souls, nefesh, is in the plural over here. Okay, uh, nefesh in the Greek, in the, in the Hebrew lexicon, nefesh is spelled out nun, uh, pe, and then, and then sheen, with, uh, with the diacritics there, uh, sego, like, like an E, like in the word get, you understand what I'm saying? All the souls, God says, God is speaking, all the souls are mine, okay, <laughs> this is mine over here, li, mine. That's what, it, that's what it means. Lee, mine. They're mine. Why are they gods? Well, because God created man and put the soul in man. So there's ownership, okay, of, uh, you know, by God uh, because he made these creatures. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so the father as well as the son, uh, they belong to God. Okay? You know what I'm saying? They belong to God. They she drink the milk, the food. Okay. Uh, I was just asking my wife if uh, the baby uh, drank uh, uh, the uh, food, uh, the baby bottle, the food in the baby bottle. Uh, let's get back to this over here. It says uh, the soul. The soul. Now, soul is um, over here, Nefesh again, tagged by uh, 5315. 5315, the soul. The soul is mentioned and recorded uh, 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 a handful of times in this in this verse over here. The uh, soul of the father, and of the father is Ha'av, the father, Ha'av. Okay, Av means father in Hebrew. Okay, all right. As well as the soul, and there goes soul again, Nefesh, okay, of the son. Of the son and, and and bane is the word for son bane, okay. You got the sere uh, uh, e class over there. It, it, it's it's a nowadays in, in modern Hebrew. Uh, there's no a, uh, you know, sound like that um, in, in 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 modern Hebrew. Uh, 
Haben, actually, uh, nowadays. So Haben, if you want to uh, stress the biblical pronunciation. Ha means, ha can be an article, like Hadabar, um, Behreshit, Haya Hadabar, ha, let me see, Behreshit, Haya Hadabar, Va Hadabar, Haya Im, Ha Elohim, Va Elohim, Haya Hadabar. Okay, so Hadabar means word there in John 1 1 in Hebrew. And then you have Ha Elohim, the God, if you will. I mean, you know, and and uh, and so that shows the deal. So Ha can be an article, and it sounds the same as the Greek Ha, but it's, it looks different. Mine, Lee, remember, uh, remember, uh, uh, the soul of the Father, as well as the soul of the Son of Mine, uh, Lee, that says God. Uh, So, Nefesh again. Okay, all right. Nefesh, uh, who sins. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. No, no. Who sins. Okay, and um, the word for sin here is uh, Chata. Let's check Chata out. 2398. If Sean is there, please tell the person to 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 bring him back because I'm studying over here. Uh, uh, no, but I, heard, I thought I heard him um, um, at the door. Definition: It says to miss, uh, go wrong, uh, sin. So it, it actually is uh, means sin. Okay. Um, what is this? Chata. Chata means sin in Hebrew. Okay. One of the words for sin in Hebrew and harmatia. In Greek, you understand what I'm saying? So it's just, it's just a deal. Uh, uh, shall die. Shall die. Moot means uh, die or dead. Moot. Okay. Tamut. Uh, 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 tamut. So tamut means, okay, will die, shall die. It's almost like a subjunctive, you know. But let's not forget it. Okay, it is very important here. Okay, uh, he. Okay, he means it's here. He, you understand? He is spelled out he with the Hedek I classes one dot underneath the consonant. That's an I in Hebrew. When you see a dot underneath a letter in Hebrew, you're probably looking at the I. And then you yod. He. Uh, it says over here, it shall die. It. Okay, he. Uh, it shall die. You understand what I'm saying? It shall die. Uh, who, uh, what? The soul. But the meaning person, though. Meaning person. We know that the soul can't die. The soul cannot die. Now, when you're talking about Jesus, okay, because we're talking about Jesus, we can't forget that we're talking about Jesus, okay? We can't forget that uh, he has an indestructible life. Verse 16, verse 16 of, of, uh, of chapter 7 of Hebrews. Indestructible life. He's the prince of life. He's the author of life. How can you put the author of life to death? Not even God the Father could have put Jesus to death. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? And by the way, why would the Father put him to death anyway? He said to tell us die on the cross, the debt has been paid in full. You understand what I'm saying? To tell us die. Reduplicating consonant tau, connected by a connecting vowel, uh, connecting, uh, by, a, uh, connecting by a connecting vowel uh, epsilon. You understand what I'm saying? Tie is passive, you understand what I'm saying? The debt didn't pay itself, it was paid. You understand? My side tie, uh, methods tie. You understand? Ah, uh, that's just a deal. Primary passive personal ending, you understand? So the debt has been paid in full. So why God has to collect from Jesus his soul if he already paid for a man's sin on the cross? You understand what I mean? If he paid for men's sins on the cross, there's nothing else to collect. He said to tell us, it's, it's finished. It's finished already. It's finished. You, you understand what I'm saying? So remember that there was a sin, okay, charged, uh, 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 done by Moses, um, uh, done by Moses, uh, striking the rock twice, and he was barred from Palestine. He was barred from the land. And that rock was Christ. And the sin was in striking the rock twice. It's, it's, it's like saying you're putting to death uh, Jesus. You're putting uh, Jesus to death two times. So why would God be involved in the same sin that that Moshe was? It doesn't make any sense. 
Why punish him if he was involved in the same thing? In killing uh, Jesus, okay, putting him to death twice. He said to tell us that, and that's it. The, the soul didn't have to be destroyed. There was no need to destroy the soul. There was no need to destroy the body. The greatest piece of, uh, the greatest, the greatest piece of evidence ever recorded in human history was the body of Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? Also, I'll throw in there the grave clothes and then the, the tomb and the slab of rock that Jesus was on and then the DNA samples even before DNA was, uh, was, uh, was a thing. DNA popped on the scene in 1989. It was well, well uh, in vogue. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Okay, all right. And, and the tomb, hair samples, blood, all that stuff was there. You understand what I'm saying? Sweat. On the shroud, I mean, on the on the on the handkerchief or whatever the case may be, the sweat towel. You understand what I'm saying? The pieces of evidence, the tomb itself. You understand? All those were pieces of, of evidence and uh, as exhibits in, in the court of God. So why would God get rid of the greatest piece of evidence? You understand what I'm saying? Ever recorded in human history, the body, the soma of Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? Doesn't make any sense. So the soul couldn't uh, of Jesus. Could not, no, you know, this is for everybody. Everybody's gonna be resurrected from the dead. That's just the deal. Praxis Apostle, uh, Praxis Apostle only actually apostles. You understand what I'm saying? In uh, chapter Kappa uh, Delta, or 24, verse uh, 15. You understand what I'm saying? Eota Epsilon, by the way. Uh, it says strictly, clearly, plainly, correctly, cogently, carefully that everybody, whether they're just or the, un uh, the, just or the unjust, will be resurrected from the dead to appear. I got uh, uh, a judgment. You understand what I'm saying? The beaver for the for the Christian people, the white throne for the uh, for the non-Christian. But they will all be resurrected from the dead, and so that's just the deal. You don't understand? So that's just it. Now, so we looked at it in the Hebrew. It. Now, um, Aute, okay, and um, and uh, let me see over here for a second. I gotta really fix that fan. Something's really wrong. The it is actually he over here. He, he spelled out hey, okay, yod and aleph with the with the diacritic uh, and the accent marker on the first uh, on the only syllable, but the uh, underneath the first uh, consonant. Okay. Well, guys, I have to go because I have to uh, fix the connection over here. It's just loose, as you can hear. But you get the idea. If this was the last uh, part, anyway. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna check out a little bit further on down. Okay. Um, what Jesus said because Jesus said something striking. He said, "Do not fear those who destroy the body, and after that they can't do anything else." See, this that's the deal. Ah, wait a minute. If they can't do nothing else, then they couldn't have killed the soul of Jesus. Now, if they could do something else, they could have killed Jesus off. And thus, a chain reaction would have been, if you kill Jesus, then the soul of Jesus would have been uh, killed off. So, what Jesus said is a moot point. After they killed the body, they can't do anything else. Well, I mean, if, 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 if Jesus' soul was destroyed, well, they did kill the both. They killed two birds with one stone. They killed the body of Jesus, and in, in killing the body of Jesus, they killed the, the soul of Jesus because that's like a chain of uh, 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 chain event. You understand what I'm saying? Domino effect. So what Jesus said is a moot point if the soul of Jesus was killed because of the of his uh, bodily death. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? But we had to see because um, you know that verse because. The witnesses say, yeah, but the man can't kill the soul, but God can kill the soul. So in my next, um, okay, part, we would go, we will go to what Jesus said about the soul, okay, that, that God can destroy both soul and body in hell. Okay? In hell. Now, what does that mean? We'll check it out in my next study. As far as this goes, let's see what we learn. We learn that 
um, verse 4 doesn't teach annihilation. It teaches responsibility. It teaches that the fathers will be responsible for their own sins, and then the sons will be responsible for their own sins. So it doesn't teach annihilation at all. We learn that the reason why verse 4 was recorded was because of verse 2. Okay? It was a proverb going around in Israel saying that the, the father eat the sour grapes, and the, but the children's teeth is set in eggs. And God says, no, everybody will bear their own load. We saw that the word blood appears twice in the chapter, helping us to actually prove that this is talking about physical death. Of see verses 10 and 13. The responsibility of the sins will be upon, okay, uh, uh, the, the own uh, rosh or head of the person that commits the crime. Rosh is the Hebrew word for head. We saw the constructions, uh, the Hebrew and Greek constructions, uh, and we saw that um, that uh, that psuche is uh, the word for soul in Greek, and nefesh is the word for soul in Hebrew. Okay, we saw uh, the words uh, 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 pater and ben for uh, father and son. We saw that it will die, meaning that person will die, not somebody else. And so we saw he in the Hebrew and alte, I believe, in the Greek. Okay. This is Angelo Quinones giving glory to God the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ and then the Holy Spirit. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And that means that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were very much alive at the time that Jesus said those words. You understand what I'm saying? Now, this is the Anastasis series of, of, uh, of, of Jesus, the resurrection, uh, bodily resurrection series of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so, um, so that's it, that he was the, the same body that he took as a birthday suit was the same body that was risen, and that's just the deal. And when it's talking about uh, uh, raised from the dead, it's talking about the extraction of the soul from Sheol and the, uh, the emplacement of that soul into the body, and that body yet lived again. Okay? That's just the deal. Please subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up and please leave your comment on the screen. Now, uh, stay tuned for that. Now, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to put it apart. I'm going to put it separately. Okay, the teaching of Jesus about um, God being able to kill uh, both uh, the body and soul in hell. Stay tuned for that. That'll be a separate uh, teaching. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Bye bye.